Good morning. I'm sitting in my bed. I was just writing in my journal and all these things came to me that I realized I should share. So in my last video, I talked about how I got COVID and how my vibration dropped and I was feeling sad, but it was for a reason. And I want to share my revelations with you. I, having to sit at home all of those days and kind of do nothing, I got all these signs and synchronicities because I, I always ask, I'm like, okay, why is this happening? What is the, what are you trying to tell me? And then I pay attention to everything. <clears throat> so during that time, I found this girl's YouTube and I saw she was making three YouTube videos a week. She was posting on TikTok. She was posting on Instagram and she was putting all of this effort into making her channel grow because she wants to be an influencer. And I looked at her and I just thought, wow, that's so much, that's so much work. You know, I can't do that. And her videos just kept, kept popping up. I realized like, oh, you want me to put way more effort into this. And then I had to think like, what, what is, what is my vision? Like what, where is the future of my YouTube channel going. I know that I want to share, empower, and inspire people. And I do want to share my experiences because maybe my experiences can help somebody else. And I do feel that that is what I'm supposed to do. But people in the social media world always say like, you need to find a niche and to stick to it. And there's just this path that you need to follow. And I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, but like, I don't know what my path looks like. And I'm still kind of creating the vision. And I just want to do something that I love and not feel trapped and be in one specific category. And I know myself and I am so like, one thing that's been constant is that I'm so spiritual and I'm so into like knowing the meaning of a life and going deeper and, you know, connecting to the divine and talking to my angels and guides and meditation and just exploring this whole world. I find it so fascinating and so fulfilling. And the other part of me is super materialistic and just wants to be cute. So I think I'm going to be sharing both of those things. I don't wanna feel like I have to hold back or that I can't do something because at the end of the day, I'm trying to create a life that I love and that I'm passionate about and I don't want to live in this program of being a zombie and going to work at this job that I don't like. I want to create something that I love, that I'm passionate about, that I'm excited to do and something that has a purpose and that helps people and that inspires people. Whether it's me saying, this is my favorite bikini or mascara or, hey, try this meditation. It was life-changing or this is how I talk to the universe. I want to be able to kind of share it all like a a lifestyle of being a happy, empowered queen goddess or god. I just don't want to hold back. So the universe showed me this girl and it was like, you need to go all in. You still have fear about this. You still don't 100% believe in yourself and we're telling you that you can do this. So we are requesting you to make more YouTube videos, to do more on social media and to share more of the things that you love. Processing that at first really scared me because at first I, I didn't, I thought I already overcame those fears. And then I was like, oh, I'm not doing all of this stuff that everybody else is doing that actually wants to succeed. And then I thought about all the things I had to do. And then that scared me. Then I thought, oh, what are people gonna think of me? I've never, done this before? What if people think it's dumb? Pretty much it was just a fear of stepping into putting more energy into something that I want to do, which, you know, why would you be scared of that? 
Oh, it's so funny. There was always two people in all, in all of us. There's like your human self that gets scared, that feels fear, that feels sadness. And then there's like your higher self, your God self that has all the answers and the guidance that you need. And then you kind of like juggle these two people in this one body. And then you talk to yourself and you're like, well, I shouldn't care what people think. I should just do what I know that I'm supposed to do and what I enjoy doing. So why would I hold back for other people? This is my life and I am creating a life that I love, that has meaning, that makes me happy. And I, at the end of the day, don't want to be enslaved to some job that I don't want to be at doing something that means absolutely nothing to me. And like, yes, we all need to make money to survive and we have bills to pay, but I have always felt that there is this other life waiting for me. And it's a life that I love, the life of my dreams. And you know what's crazy is that when I was at the Dr. Joe Dispenza week-long advanced meditation retreat, I got a glimpse of my future. I saw three different scenes, and it was more than I could have ever imagined. Even in my meditation the other day, I got a glimpse of something, and I saw what I looked like, what I was doing, and how I felt. And I was just like, yeah, that is, that is the life that I want. And <laughs> it's so funny because social media and YouTube were in both of those images. And it's like the universe keeps confirming that this is my path, and then my human self continues to sometimes feel fear or feel doubt. I almost think this would be a lot easier for me if it didn't feel like it was a huge part of my purpose. But like knowing that, it makes me happy. But usually your dream, your purpose scares you, but also excites you at the same time. I hope I'm making sense. I'm literally just sitting in bed trying to just speak what I'm seeing and feeling. I, w I really wish telepathy was more of a thing because the what I experience in my own head and see and feel is so hard to put into words for me. And sometimes I feel like when I'm delivering the message, it's not, it doesn't always match up to what's actually going on in my head. And that's just gonna take practice. But anyways, where was I with all this? So the universe was telling me I need to step it up. There's more that I could be doing and to not be afraid and that it is time. And I've been waiting for this time forever. So many things in my life happened for me to be here and for me to just get that it's time to begin and to not be scared. I have wanted to be a model since I was like four or five years old. It was the first dream that I could ever remember. Something that I wanted so badly. And I don't know why. And then when I was younger, I used to play with cameras and like make little movies with the little kids that in the neighborhood. And I thought that was fun. And then life took over and I didn't really always fit in when I was younger. And I wasn't always the prettiest person. So then it made me self-conscious and worried about what I looked like and scared of rejection. And then when I got a little bit older, I did try modeling, but I never went full force because again, I was so, I wanted it so bad and I was so scared of rejection that if it didn't happen, I just wanted to cry, which makes me sad to think about. And I would always get so close, like, it was funny, I would always get so close, but then I wouldn't have it. Like I would start doing shoots and practice and get a little bit better and then maybe have a meeting with an agency in LA and somebody would like me and then somebody wouldn't like me or, oh, you know, 5'7 is too short. It was before Instagram was a thing, so you had to be tall to be a model. Or, oh, like you're too commercial or oh, you need to move to LA and do a bunch of test shoots before we can sign you. But I didn't know anybody in LA. I didn't have any money to move to LA. So it just wasn't happening, but it was something 
that I wanted so badly. It was, it was crazy, but I was so scared of it. I couldn't like fully do it. I still get nervous. I still get nervous taking pictures now. It's so funny. I'm always like, oh my God, what if, what if I don't get a good picture, but you take like 200 and then, you know, there's something in there that you really like. So my modeling <laughs> didn't really work out back then. Then I decided, oh, it would be so fun to have a reality TV show. Like how does, how does somebody get one? And then I decided, all right, let me, I made this like little PowerPoint presentation with, I think it was like me, my mom and my cousin. And I tried to send it to like all the, all these random networks explaining why we should have a show and why we're entertaining. And all of them were just like, we, we can't accept people's ideas. Um, I don't remember, I don't remember what it, what it was exactly, but like they can't just like take your ideas because they don't want you to sue for copying that idea. And then one day I went on, on Craigslist, like as this was all happening and I saw a casting for a TV show and it was, <laughs> it was looking for moms and daughters who have a fun relationship and party together. So I thought, okay, you know, my mom's really funny. I like to go out and hang out. Let me try this. And when I read it, my stomach dropped. It was this like crazy feeling that I got. So, so I knew that I was supposed to send in photos and a description for this. So I did, and then an hour later, I get a phone call from the casting directors, and they tell me like, okay, like, you know, we like what you sent us. We need you to, to make a little video of you and your mom, maybe going out and send us a few more pictures. So I had, I had my iPhone and a flashlight <laughs> for lighting. And we went to this place where they serve food as well, so it wasn't like a club, but uh, people like go out there because um, I wasn't 21 yet. I was I was 20. So I filmed like this whole funny video of us like getting ready and going out and my mom dancing with some guy and he's like picking her up and it was it was actually like hilarious. People there wanted to be in this video that I was filming with literally my phone and causing drama and it was it was per it was just like a perfect it was perfect for this audition video that I was making so I sent them I edited that and I sent it in and they loved it so then they uh, flew us out to LA and got us a room with other with other people that were possibly going to be on the show but um I mean, we, n we never, we never got to meet them. You're kind of like locked in your room the whole time. And then um, they presented us with this super scary, this very scary contract, which pretty much gives them control over your whole life for the next five years. But my mom and I were just like, let's just go for it. You know, let's, let's do this. They told us we got the show, but then a week before we were supposed to leave, they called and they said, I was the only cast member that was not 21 and they wanted us to be able to like go out and drink and party and, you know, film all the drama with our moms and that the network didn't want to pay for us to go out of the country to film. So we got cut and that was devastating. So I was like super depressed about that for months because I, I also like told all my friends and I was excited. I was like, oh my God, you know, I was trying to get a TV show and a few months later I got one and I signed a contract and it was just super exciting for somebody that was 20 years old. Then it didn't work out. So, you know, I had this crash and this depression and I was just like, modeling didn't work out. This TV show didn't work out. You know, what? What am I supposed to do with my life? A few months later, they had this other show that they were casting for and they messaged me saying that I should create an audition tape for this. And it was gonna be like the, like that show Modern Family, but a reality TV show version. So I got our cast members together. It was gonna be me, my mom, my sister, who was like 
emo at the time, our neighbor who was kind of like our fake grandmother back then, and my mom's two gay friends. So we were this like interesting group of characters for sure. It was like my mom, who's this Moroccan woman living in America with this accent, who, um, who was just so funny. And then her two gay friends who are just absurd. Okay, they're, they were hilarious and they had such a dirty mind. So it was funny. And then my sister, who has like her bang over her eye and her skateboarding boyfriend. And then me, who's like, I want to be a model, but like also aliens. Ghosts, tarot cards, look at my crystals. So anyways, I made that audition tape and then they liked it. And then we signed a contract with another network and another production company. And then they told us we were gonna start filming in about four months and to kind of like schedule some fun events and plan some things out. And then that ended up getting dropped as well. And then kind of like life happened and I got lost in this, just in the life of kind of like being young, making money, going out, being sad on the inside, not really doing anything fulfilling, but something inside of me was just always, there's something else out there for you. There's this future waiting for you. There, there's something like, this feeling that you have is for a reason. There's something out there. And then at what a normal person would probably say is the worst time ever for me to move to Hawaii, I moved to Hawaii because I knew in my intuition that I should. So I did and I lived in Hawaii for years and it was fun and joyful and difficult and sad and I think that's when my real spiritual journey actually began and I found more of myself there and became more of my true self. At one point I made a friend that knew a lot about social media and we started taking pictures in our bikinis and posting on Instagram. And at first it was really fun, but I was just like, oh, it's just like me and a friend or me and this photographer friend and we're just taking pictures and this kind of like fulfills my dream of wanting to be a model and I was just posting on Instagram and I was doing it all the time because I saw my followers were, I was like gaining followers from it. And this was a long time, this was like six years ago. So I started gaining followers from it and pretty quickly as well. So I continued to post and kind of like do more. And I realized it was a lot of work. It was like a full-time job. But back then, Instagram wasn't what it is now where you get paid a lot of money for having followers. And, and you know that if you're putting this work in, there's a future in it. Back then, it was just like, okay, I'm putting in all of this work and okay, it's nice getting free bikinis and free things here and there. But you know, they're just sending me a product and then I'm out here putting my makeup on, setting up appointments with friends, driving around the island, taking these pictures. It's hot, it's humid, I'm sweating, but I gotta make it look like I'm just glistening and enjoying myself, which Yes, at times it was enjoyable, and then there were times where it wasn't not, where it wasn't enjoyable at all. Or times where you just like, get ready because you have to post on your story and you, you can't just be like, hey, I'm just sitting in my bed. I'm not doing anything today. Yeah, I knew that it was important to post every single day and post on your story every single day because that was what I saw was gaining followers. But then at the same time, I didn't know what the future held and it was so funny, the universe always gave me signs to continue and that I could do it. But I was like, where? I don't know where this is leading me to. And then of course, years later, I mean, if I continued, I would probably have like maybe a million followers right now. Cause that was six years ago. And at that time, I was getting messages from people about like modeling and how to do it and messages from these cool brands that have millions of followers now and 
it's just crazy to see how looking back if I would have continued where I would be now but at the same time I was also scared back then because I always told myself like well I'm not a real model I'm not like traveling the world modeling I'm just here on an island taking pictures with my friends like this doesn't count like people know that I'm not a real model and then I would come back home to Vegas and people would be like oh how's modeling oh my god your pictures look so great and I would just be like do people think I'm a real model because I'm not a real model it's just funny how we get in our own way and how sometimes we really don't believe in ourselves so I stopped doing social media I would just post from time to time or just take pictures for fun because I did, I, like, I do enjoy taking pictures. I think it's fun. I just, there was like no <laughs> return on my time. So, you know, it's like, okay, well, I have, I have to get a job now. I have other things to do. I stopped focusing on that. And then I also thought like, what's the point? You know, I'm just posting pictures of myself in Hawaii. Like, what, is, what does this do for anyone? Like, I like that, but is that gonna be fulfilling forever? So then I evolved more as a human and I wrapped up my time in Hawaii and that's when the universe started saying make a YouTube channel you need to do YouTube over and over and over again and now everything has come full circle and I see how everything in my life had to happen exactly that way and that the things that I loved to do when I was younger are part of my life purpose the modeling and playing with cameras because social media is actually something that you can turn into a career now but it's something that you control and you can make it what you want it to be so it's like all those little things that I was into that I was passionate about have all come together my modeling, my playing with cameras my spirituality, wanting to know the meaning of life, and now we're here. And that was a huge part of the revelation that I had when I was sad. I was like, all right, we have arrived. Now is your time. The door is opening. So please step into this with no fear. Go all in. Stop thinking about what other people think. Take your pictures make your videos, share what you want to share, and just do it. And that's scary too. I haven't, you know, made it yet, and it's all up to me to get there. And I know the universe has my back with this, but it's also scary. So that's what I have been accepting. That was my revelation. And there was also something else that was revealed to me. I started getting I start like people on Instagram started following me that had their own business or like an online business or that were doing like some sort of coaching. They were their own bosses and they were kind of like doing something that they loved. And I was just like, oh, so interesting that these these entrepreneurs, these business people are following little old me. That's like <laughs> that's literally what what I thought. And then I was like, oh, it must be from my doctor Joe Dispenza videos on YouTube. I thought, you know, that, that's the only way. And then I thought, well, there must be a reason behind this. I wasn't fully aware, but like, I always thought these like online things were scams. You know, people were like, I made $150,000 this month and this is how. And I just turned my, I just turned my head away. I'm like, yeah, 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 you're just trying to sell me something. So these people with their own businesses were, were following me and all these things about like investing have been catching my eye, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't know anything about that, okay? My financial literacy is at like a one out of 10. And that was something that the universe was like, it is time to learn, baby, okay? Stop running away. There is a future for you and Yes, we have made money magically appear in your life this whole year, but now we want you to step into this other fear, this other unknown, and 
learn about money, like step out of your comfort zone and learn these things that you don't know about or that you were just too lazy to learn because it feels like this whole other world to me. But the universe was saying like, okay, surrender, it's time. Like you, you gotta go all in on your, on creating this future that you want. And to create that future that you want, you also have to have this financial literacy and you have to believe and you have to know that making this kind of money exists. So three days ago, I went on TikTok and I try to avoid that app. But this video popped up that caught my attention for some reason. And I know when something catches my attention, it's my intuition, my soul, my higher self speaking to me. So it caught my attention and this girl's like, I made $329,000 this month because of my online course about how to create online courses. And I was just like, let me look at this girl's page. What is she doing? Is this real? So I looked on her page and I was like, oh, everything she's saying, it makes sense. And then she made this video and it was her living in Maui with her boyfriend in some small little teeny tiny shack with a shower outside and I don't know, it just didn't look fun. But I just go, oh, I used to live in Maui. Like this is a message for me. Okay, universe. So I watched her YouTube video about how she got started and it just kind of like opened up my mind to this new world of possibilities and I was just like, wow. And then, you know, she was just talking about like reels and the importance of making reels and I remember thinking, oh my god, because when TikTok first came out, I tried to make a few and it took hours to make one. I found it to be so difficult, but it's just something that you have to practice a lot to make it easy. So anyway, she's talking about reels and how that, you know, helped her business and grew her following. And, and I, I just, I was encouraged, but also scared. Cause I was like, okay, that's something else that I don't have much experience with. And then I saw her testimonials and one of her clients was this girl that teaches you how to make reels and I'm not like buying her program or anything, but on her page, it has a bunch of information about it. So, so it was like all, all this information was coming to me in so many different ways, you know, like through my meditations, through my intuition, through the things that were popping up in social, on social media and like catching my eye and catching my attention. There was always this force that's guiding you towards what you want and your truth and your truest path. So I, I went to this girl's real page and I noticed that in the background of all of her reels is this painting. And in the room that I stay in at my dad's when I'm in Hawaii is a painting by the same exact artist. It's almost identical. That was another synchronicity. Pretty much the universe is like, it's time, go all in. Here are the tools. We're showing you what's possible. We're giving you the information that you need. Just go for it. Let yourself be seen, don't be afraid, work on your goals, inspire people, share information, tell them about the mascara you love, do your thing, girl. So that's where I am, that's the truth, that's my revelation, that was the core of my sadness and why I had to sit at home and why I had COVID and all of that. It was like, I knew that doing the meditations was preparing me for the beginning of my new life. And, and then this crash happened and I was just like, okay, what, why am I crashing? But I had a crash to have these revelations to be like, your new life is beginning, but you have to step into it. And this is what we need you to know. And this is how you step into it. Here I am trying to step into my new life. I would really appreciate your support. So like, subscribe and comment. This video was so long, I'm sorry. I do really have a hard time 
truly saying what's on my mind, formulating it into words, especially when I'm just talking to a camera. Like if you were a person sitting right in front of me, we could make eye contact and you could respond or like nod at me or I could see what you're feeling through your eyes, but it's just me kind of talking to a brick wall and I'm still adjusting to that. Anyways, I, I'm just continuing to ramble. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I will, the next time you see me, I will be in Hawaii. So I will see you then. Mm -hmm.